It's back, it's here, <laughs> finally. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another rare plant index oh my gosh it has been forever but as you know these videos actually take a lot of turnaround time we're talking like a week solid of research for this kind of stuff so i'm very sorry i haven't been able to put one of these out sooner but do not worry they are back they will start appearing so if you do not already know what a rare plant index is it is a video in which i take different types of plants and i categorize them from common uncommon, rare, very rare, extremely rare, and sometimes a holy category. If you have not already seen from the title, this week's Red Plant Index is all about begonia. Now there are actually over 1.8 thousand different species of begonia, so if you do not see a begonia, you know, that is well known or anything like that in this list, I apologize, I've probably missed it. Okay, quick disclaimer, what is rare for me in my country and my findings may not be rare for you. I live in the UK, so what I find rare might be the total opposite to what is rare in the country where you live. So starting off with common begonia. I've picked two to show you guys just because I feel that they're the begonia that I see a lot. I have here the Rex begonia on the left and the begonia escargot on the right. Now I don't know what it is, I just these plants don't appeal to me these two plants. I I don't know. I, I don't know if because they're common, they're more liked. I'm not really sure. Maybe they're just easy to get a hold of. But those are two examples of more common begonia that you may or may not see in shops, even in garden centers. Like they're kind of knocking about quite a bit. So I'm just going to kick things straight off with Uncommon, and hopefully there's no really difficult names to pronounce. So, first off in Uncommon, I have placed the Begonia Black Fang, because it is Halloween, and it's nice to have a little bit of black leafage. So this one's actually really cool. I think there's some nice coloration there at the centre of the leaf, so there's some nice green kind of spiky veins, would you say? They're pretty nice. Not really one for me, but you know, for you plant goths, this could actually be quite a nice one because it does have an interesting shape, it does have a little bit of something to it in the center, and it's also uncommon, so you can probably pick it up pretty easily. Second on the list in uncommon, a couple of people might disagree with me on this, but certainly in the UK, the Begonia maculata whitei, I think that's how you say it, is actually reasonably common here. Um, it's, it's not difficult to get hold of at all. Every Begonia lover that I know of seems to really want this plant, adore this plant, strive to have this plant. I see it literally everywhere. From a begonia point of view, I totally get why this is a good choice of begonia. It's not too difficult to get a hold of, it's got some good characteristics on it, and it's striking. So I, I kind of get the hype there. I used to want one of those at one point. I think I went through a phase where I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get one. I'm just going to try it, because I saw it so often in garden centers. I never picked it up though. Next up in Uncommon, this is kind of cool, and I also wanted to pick this up at some point as well. This is the begonia breakdance. There is something about this plant I actually, I, I quite like it. The leaves do have a nice shape to them. They do look kind of wispy, which is nice. I did see a photograph online of these leaves under a flash and they did look, you know, that cool iridescent blue color. So I don't know to what extent they are iridescent, but it was pretty interesting to look at to be honest. It was nice. I think as much as I do actually genuinely like this begonia, the way it grows will probably irritate me. I feel like I might feel that it looks quite messy in the pot. Like I do think you'd need a, a taller pot for this, clearly. I mean, the image I'm looking at, it is in a taller pot. It's okay. I do like it. It is different. I just think I would get sick of it pretty quickly. Next up, we have the Begonia Luxurians. Now, I remember this had its like five minutes of fame earlier on this year, actually. I think it was in like April or something. A lot of shops started to stock this. I wanted to include this because it is a bit of a different shape from the usual Begonia that you might be thinking of. So if you do want something totally different than is a Begonia, this one might be a nice one for you. It's kind of like a droopy palm. Kind of, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Following that in Uncommon, we have the Begonia Snowcap. Now, this is just one spotted angel-winged Begonia I picked out out of a lot of them. There are a lot, a lot of Begonia reasonably similar to this one. So I just thought I would pick this one out. I didn't want to include you know, like 50 of the same Begonia kind of thing. So I picked this one out and I'm pretty sure it's called Snowcap because on the very tip of the leaf, you may be able to see from the photograph, it has, well, Snowcaps. It has kind of like white tips. It's quite nice. I think I'd rather have this over the maculata, just because I think I prefer smaller spots on the leaves rather than big leaves. 
Next one, this is a little bit weird in Uncommon. We have the Begonia Sea Urchin, and I can only assume it is called Sea Urchin because of the way it looks. The leaves kind of curl up, I think. It's pretty cool. I mean, it does kind of look like it's prepared to scuttle off when you're not looking, so it's kind of cool. It's not for me, but it is a different leaf shape, so I also wanted to include that because, you know, I'm all about that variety. Ten things look the same. I'm probably not going to include all ten on principle, so... Ooh, okay. I actually like this one. Next on our list for Uncommon is the Begonia Bipinatifida. Bipinatif... Bipinatifida. We'll go with that. I actually like this Begonia quite a bit, but I can actually explain why I like it, which in turn means I don't really like Begonia. I know that sounds ridiculous, but just stick with me for a second. So I actually think I like this because, honestly, it reminds me of a fern. It looks quite a lot like a fern. It is prettier than some ferns, don't get me wrong. But I feel like if I really wanted to buy something like this, I'd probably just go out and buy a fern that I kind of liked in place of this. I don't know. I f maybe if I saw this in person, I would be like completely blown away and think differently of it. But that's, I know for a fact, that's the reason why I like the look of this. It's got nothing to do with the fact that it's begonia because it looks like a fern. So if you like ferns and you want to try a begonia that looks, you know, like a fern, then this is probably the one for you. Okay, I'm going to bring in some texture now with the next plant on the list and the last plant in the uncommon category actually and that is the begonia solemutata solemn mutata just terrible at plant names honestly i don't think i'm ever going to learn so just you know get used to it so if you're less about you know the the cool leaf shapes and more about texture then this might be the one to go for by the looks of it it has red backs on it and it's also i don't know if it's fuzzy or corrugated i'm gonna run with corrugated it's a little bit difficult to say on my tablet because my tablet just makes everything look crap basically it's okay again if you want something that is reasonably easy to get a hold of but it has texture and it still has some you know funkiness to it with the green and the leaves there then this might be one you might want to look at right i'm now going to move into the rare category and honestly some of these i think maybe shouldn't be in the rare category but we'll just see so the first plant I have in rare is the Begonia Hallows Eve. Now, I do think this is a hybrid, so it probably shouldn't be in here. But honestly, I'm not too knowledgeable on Begonia. There's probably loads of hybrids in here, so please forgive me for that. But I quite like this one. It's black. From what I can tell, it's black because Begonia tend to catfish quite a lot. It is hairy and it's got a really, really nice uh, orange veining in the middle. I quite like it. It's, it's not for me, but as a Begonia, I think it offers a lot. Again, another goth plant, if you're up for another goth begonia. Halloween's coming up, guys. It's called All Hallows' Eve. I saw an opportunity, and I took it. This one, I'm not expecting anybody to like. Maybe you will like it. I don't know. I don't like it for the simple reason that I don't understand it. And that is the begonia lanceolata. Now, this looks nothing like a begonia. I think if you're a begonia collector, you might want this, but honestly, just because it doesn't look anything like a begonia, doesn't have any of the hallmarks that a begonia would have, I don't really see why anyone would really want to pick this up. I'd be amazed if it was actually, you know, desired and sought after by many. That's... Nah, I don't like that one. Okay, getting a little bit cooler now in the rare category, we have the Begonia Chloronura. I think that's how you say it. This one is quite nice, actually. It appears to have very, very dark leaf color. I don't know if it's black. It looks pretty black on the image I'm looking at. Also, it has really bright lime green veins, which are always a plus. I don't know. This does seem to be reasonably sought after, I think. I'm not 100%. I do like the contrast in the veining, though. It's quite nice. Okay, so the next one, we actually have an undescribed begonia in the list. This is begonia U309. I saw this on Google, actually, and I had to kind of go and look it up because it reminds me of an allocation that I did in my allocation rare plant index. Now, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't the black velvet. It was something else. I don't know. It, it reminds me of an allocation. Obviously, it has a begonia leaf shape, but it's very, very meaty and the leaves they look meaty i don't know if they they're corrugated they might be i'm not sure i can't tell from the image i'm looking at anyway but the the leaf pattern kind of reminds me of tire tracks if you want something a little bit more unusual that you maybe don't typically see i do think this is quite a nice one it's kind of like snow covered tire tracks up next we have some more bright green veining and that is the begonia raja i think that is how you pronounce it it would appear from the image i'm looking at anyway i never normally find out the true colors of things 
seconds till I get into editing, but it would appear to me that these leaves are burgundy, or at least they, they emerge burgundy. But they have bright green veining, and it looks to me as though the plant is actually quite waxy, so it's not furry, it's not velvety. I could be wrong, but it, it looks kind of waxy to me. I haven't seen it in real life, obviously, so I can't confirm, but it's kind of cool. I get why somebody would want to own this. Okay, so if you ever wanted like a Halloween addition to your Begonia maculata, this might be the plant for you. This is the Begonia batwing. I actually really like this. And you know what? I think I would pick it over the maculata because it's just got that little bit of edge to it. So obviously with Halloween coming up, I had to pick this out for you guys. Again, it's just like, you know, an angel wing Begonia, but it just has that just little bit extra. I really like it. Would I get it? I think if I saw it when I was out plant shopping, I would pick it up, but I wouldn't strive to look for it, if that makes any sense. Like it's not on a wish list or anything like that. The only plants I actually strive to look for are on my wish list. Other than that, I tend not to go anywhere near plants because it just gets out of control. That is quite nice though. I, I do like that, not just for Halloween, but for life, you know, that is nice. Next up on the list, we have another undescribed begonia, and that begonia is begonia U641. This is quite nice. Every image I saw of this on uh, Google, it kind of looked fluorescent. So it has a lovely angel wing shaped leaf, and the dots on it kind of look like they glow. Again, could just be the images I'm seeing. I've been catfished before, certainly with begonia. It could happen again, but I don't really see this mentioned anywhere. I don't think. So I'm putting it in this category. And I did want to mention it because it's kind of a little bit cooler because if it does even remotely appear to be fluorescent, then that's kind of awesome. That's what we want. Next up on the list, a begonia that is arguably a lot more popular and that is the begonia thelme or thelmi. I think it could be thelmi. This appears to be more of a trailing begonia from what I've seen on the images. I'm not 100%. I do, again, like the way that the main vein in the leaf kind of has a glowing effect. From what I can see on here, it has a very neat growth pattern. It's It seems to be different to other begonia. Again, I could be very wrong. And it does look kind of velvety. It's nice. I wouldn't get it. You know, there's so many other plants that I'd probably rather have. Can you see where I'm going with this? It doesn't do anything for me, but it is nice. Oh God, I'm gonna sneeze, I'm gonna sneeze. No, 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 no. Oh. I think it's worse sometimes when your sneeze goes away and you don't actually sneeze. Like, I'd, I'd wanna sneeze, you know? I've gone that far. Okay, let's hope it doesn't make a return. Let's hope I'm not getting ill, by the way. Tell me if you think I sound any different because I feel kind of like I'm getting a little bit ill, so I'm not too happy about that. Let me know in the comments if you think I sound any different. So, next on our list, we have the Begonia Postulata. Not the best name. I don't know why they named it that. Really, I'd have to get creative to think of why they named it this way, but it does seem to be quite popular. It's pretty fleshy and pretty furry from what I can see on images that I've seen. It does have the very cool begonia spots that a lot of people know and love. One thing I will say is I've seen a few different pictures of this on Google and the appearance of the leaves, like the, the amount of spots and general the ratio of light to dark on the leaf seems to look a little bit different across, you know, different individual plants. So I don't know if that's true or not, or if that's something to look out for. I'm not not really sure but i do see people wanting these so i've seen i don't know okay this next one i've also included for general weirdness and general color this is the begonia vivaldi i can only assume it is named from the classical composer i don't really know it does remind me of that actually i don't know why four seasons it just does i'm going to divide people here because to me Every time I look at this plant, I think of, I don't even know if I can find a picture of it, but like a really old carpet that people used to have in their houses. And it was like really garish colors, similar to these leaves, like really nasty, big, ugly floral prints. I don't know if it was like a seventies thing, but I feel like my grandparents had something similar to this in their house when I was younger, or maybe my parents did, I don't know. Mom, dad, I know that you actually watch my videos. So if you know what I'm talking about, if we had a carpet like that just message me and tell me because it's really starting to irritate me now i feel like there was a house that we lived in that had a really garish nasty carpet somebody had a carpet like this and i need to find it because it's horrible <laughs> for that reason as you may have guessed although it promotes some sort of weird nostalgia i actually don't like this begonia i think the colors are a little bit garish for me i can't see from the image i'm looking at if it's velvety or not i think it might be but 
don't quote me on that. I may have picked out better images for you. I'm not entirely sure. And the last one in the rare category is the Begonia Red Fred. Now, again, I will say it again. This image looks very red. However, when I go on Google, it looks less red. It looks more green. So maybe it's just a simple case of Begonia catfishing again. I don't know. It does remind me, or at least the image I'm looking at now, reminds me of a leather couch. Like red, old, um, not diner leather, but like an old jazz club kind of leather. I don't know why, it just does. Again, I don't, I don't love this, but if you're looking for something red, this might be a nice one for you. That concludes the rare category for Begonia, which now moves us on to very rare. So we have this, and then we have one more category left because there is no holy. So I'm gonna kick off very rare, with the wonderful Begonia Amphioxus. Now, this is the only Begonia that I do actually own. This is the Begonia Amphioxus. It looks awesome. It looks like you shouldn't be anywhere near it. It looks poisonous. I love it. It's brilliant. It's not the easiest thing to grow in my experience. High humidity, yes. I have high humidity and it still crisps up a little bit. So that's pretty impressive because my humidity in this house is round about 70%. So I don't know what's going on there, but Maybe it just needs more love, I don't know. But if you want a begonia that just is just so different to anything you've seen, this is 100% the begonia to, you know, seek out and look for. It has the spots. It has the wing leaf shape, but it's much more elongated and pointy. It's really cool. And it's green red. It even has a red leaf margin, I think. Super, super awesome plant. If you want something that's just so different, something for a terrarium maybe, this, this is the begonia that you want trust me. Moving on from that, we have the catfish begonia herself, as I like to call her. This is the begonia pavonina, and uh, I had this plant on my red plant wish list a few videos ago. In the last wish list video I did, and I thought, oh my goodness, it's blue. I need it. It's gorgeous. It's not really that blue, so it's only that color under a certain light. Even like the torch on my phone couldn't really produce that kind of light, so I was just very disappointed in it. Most of the time, it just looks kind of green with like a slight blue tone to the green. It's, it's, I'm, I'm very bitter about it. Can you tell? I, I spent a lot of time looking for that plant and it catfished me. Why you gotta catfish me, man? Next on the list in very rare is the Begonia Picturata. Now, this is much more striking as a Begonia. I don't think that color is catfishing me at all. I think it looks really, really nice. From what I can see, I could be wrong. This could just be this image. It looks kind of dark, almost black. It has hairy stems, and I don't know if that's white on there or a mint green. On my photograph here, it looks mint green, but it might be white. Again, I think I just don't like Begonia, so I don't think I'll take this, but it is kind of nice. I don't know, guys. I, j I thought I would get the Begonia bug doing this rare plant index, but it hasn't happened. It just hasn't happened. I'm kind of surprised. Next on the list is a Begonia that is, it's metal. That's the best way I can put it, it's metal. This is the Begonia Ferox Ferro. I don't know how you pronounce that, I'm very sorry. This is awesome. It has spikes all over the leaves. I think the spikes look like they're coming in black. They could be really dark green, I'm not entirely sure. The spikes are quite sharp though. Like, I do think this plant is cool. Don't get me wrong, obviously it's, it's amazing. If you're into studs and spikes, this is the plant for you, 100%. But I kind of think that the Amphioxus is a little bit cooler. So I still wouldn't get this one. I would actually also prefer to get a plant similar to this, which I will mention later on, uh, rather than this for reasons that I will also mention later on. But it is awesome. I can't tell if there's red stems there. There might be, I'm not sure. This one is very cool. I can 100% understand why somebody would want this in their collection. It is very obvious to me. Next on the list, we have the Begonia Pengii. I'm gonna call it Pengii because I think that's how you pronounce it. I think this might be slightly catfishing as well. There is a photograph I found on Google and it looks super, super red. And I'm looking at one now and it just looks like a really dark green with like a burgundy tinge on it. So I don't know if it's got like burgundy hairs all over it or what. I thought I liked it. I don't think I like it anymore. There's, there's other things more striking to me, personally. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments, as always, with any of these plants. But it's, it's not my favorite. I think there's nicer begonias out there than this one. Okay, now I'm going to throw some pink at y'all because I know y'all love your pink. It's all anybody ever talks about. We've gotten into trouble in the past over pink things. So I'm gonna unleash the pink on you guys a little bit. So next on the list, we have the begonia Malocostica? Malocostica. 
This is very much similar in some ways to a lot of angel wing begonias. A little bit similar to Immaculata, but not quite. Only this one has pink spots. So I really wanted to include it in case people love the Immaculata, but you also love pink. This is a really, really nice one. Uh, is it for me? Mm -hmm. I'd have to say in person, in all honesty, because I am all about something that's a bit different. I'd have to say it in person, which is weird because I, I don't even like pink, so... So if you think, well, that's all very well and good, Kaylee, but I want more pink than that. You said there would be pink and that's not very pink. Well, I have another begonia for you. This is the begonia negrosensis. I think that's how you pronounce it. No change there. This is, from what I can see on pictures, and it does seem to transfer across a lot of Google images, this looks way more pink to me. Also, the pattern isn't spotted. It is... it's not a stripe. I don't know what I would call that pattern, but it is definitely more significant. It's definitely more pink. And there is also a kind of leaf margin around there as well. A little bit of a border. So it's really, really nice if you like the pink, but the previous one just wasn't quite doing it for you, and you want a little bit of splash. That's all well and good. Now, if you don't buzz off spots on begonias, because I know that a couple of people don't like the maculata, because it, some people say it actually looks a little bit diseased, and for a long time I thought the same thing. So if you don't like spots on your begonia generally, this is a really nice pink alternative to the previous one I just showed you. This is the Begonia Bretheremosa SP Exotica, and it is very pretty. It seems to be very, very dark in colour, and it has a really nice, like, sharded kind of pink variegation. It's nice. Is it nicer than the last one? Ooh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to, like, spend a lot of time looking at different photos of each. They're both equally nice to me. I'm looking at both now. You know what? I think I'd pick the Negrosensis, the previous one. I don't know why that is. Maybe it just looks a little bit more plant-like. I don't know. That actually concludes the very rare category for Begonia, leaving only one category left, and that is the category of extremely rare. So I'm going to kick this off with a plant that you may think is similar to a previous plant I've just shown you, and that is the Begonia Melanobolata. This is similar to the, let me find it, Begonia ferox, or ferrol, or whatever you want to call it. Now, it is similar, but apparently this one, the spikes that come in, come in at a much earlier point in time. With the ferox, you have to actually wait for it to age quite a bit before they start coming in, apparently. This one, they will be way more prominent, way quicker. So if you're very impatient, but you love the other one, and you don't mind kind of going on a hunt for this one, I guess, this might be the one for you. I think it could be a different shape. I really like that. Plus, I don't know if that's like, is it got like hairy edges? I don't know. I feel like there's more of a contrast in this this one. I do prefer this one to the ferox. I do. Another one I'd have to see in person. I don't know because sometimes pictures of a plant just look just not very good and then you see them in person you're like wow okay. Next on the list is begonia that I do like and again I know exactly why I like it. This is the begonia pteridiformis. So again, I know why I like this begonia. It's because it looks like a fern. It looks like a fern. So I think this isn't too much different from the green form. Obviously there was red form, there'll be a green form. I think the only difference actually is the red stems. But I have seen these leaves on Google with A spikes on them and B dots on them. I really think this begonia looks very beautiful. However, I know it's because I love ferns, right? So I don't think I'd pick it up. Maybe I would. I don't know. It's really difficult to see pictures of these plants and wonder if you would, you know, go for them or not when you're just looking at Google images. Okay, so this next one, I don't get it. I'm going to be honest, I don't get it. I don't get why people think this looks nice or why people would want it. But personal opinion, guys, this is the begonia bake. Do you call it bake? I don't know. I mean, I would pronounce it bake. It looks like it has a red cast to it. It looks like it's got red hairs all over it. It looks, um, I want to say meaty. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But it just doesn't look good. And this seems to be quite a costly begonia. And I honestly don't get why at all. Maybe I'm just being an absolute snob. If I am, I apologize. But I do not see, with all the other amazing begonia on this list, why this one is so great. Maybe it's just rarity alone. Because sometimes you can get really ugly plants. They're super, super rare. And people will buy them because they're rare that happens. Maybe it's that. I don't know if I'm wrong or if you know anything, correct me in the comments. <sighs> this plant plays on a pretty big, you know, emotional spot in my heart, this next one, because I saw this on Google and I thought this looked so incredibly beautiful and I had to bring myself down back to earth very quickly and realized I'm being catfished yet again. This is the Begonia Metallic Blue. I think that's how you say it. I don't know if it has a better name than that. I don't know. The shape of these leaves is 
stunning. The texture on these leaves is stunning. And in the right photograph, the blue on this just makes it look like the most beautiful, angelic pair of wings you have ever seen. I think it is absolutely beautiful. I'm guessing it's from Borneo because every single time I Google this plant, Borneo, Borneo, Borneo just came up everywhere. I guess this plant really wants to let me know that it's from Borneo. So it's from Borneo, guys. I mean, what a shame. Honestly, what a shame. If that plant actually looked like the picture I'm looking at right here, I would be so, so unbelievably overjoyed to own that. But it doesn't. It just doesn't. This upsets me. Moving on. We have the Begonia baramensis, which is pretty nice. It's got very elongated dark leaves. I'm not going to say they're black because I don't think they are. I think they're just a super, super dark green. But they have a really, really nice either white or mint green margin running all the way around the leaf. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's pretty striking. I wouldn't be surprised to see it in somebody's collection. And I would actually, for some reason, I'm really curious to see what this plant looks like in, you know, a large volume, i.e. not just two leaves. I think the overall effect of it would actually be quite beautiful. So I'd be curious to see what that looks like, to be honest. The last plant on Extremely Rare, and it is, you know, I thought about making it a Holy Grail, but I thought, no, I'm not going to sit here and say that. I don't know if that is the Holy Grail of Begonia or not. So I'm kind of putting like a preliminary warning in there. But this is wonderful. This is the Begonia Darth Vaderiana. It's lovely. It looks to be almost black. Not quite black, but almost. And it appears, at least from this image, to have, I don't know if it's lime green, it might be lime green or yellow, the most beautiful thin like leaf margin all the way around it. It's got beautiful angel wing shaped leaves, but they're not as long as the previous begonia, so they're much, much shorter. I can completely see why this is sought after. It's very, very striking. And again, similar to the last plant, if you had a plant that was very substantial, like a large volume of leaves, this could just look amazing. So it doesn't really surprise me that people are kind of after this if you're into begonia. Really, really doesn't at all. And that concludes the Begonia Red Plant Index. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there are over 1.8 thousand different species of Begonia, so it is highly likely I've missed out some really, really cool, interesting ones. If you're really, really interested in this, feel free to get yourself on Google and have a little look. I still don't think I've caught the begonia bug. I thought I would, and I thought, you know what, if I'm ever going to catch the bug, it's going to be from a rare plant index, but I can honestly say I remain unchanged on my opinion about begonia. I don't know. I think I'd be more willing to get into ferns and pipers. I guess that's what these rare plant indexes are about, though, to be fair. It's like you watch these and you find out if you're into them, or you look through the list and you think, right, is there anything I really have missed that I really like? So that is what I love about these rare plant indexes. I don't have to like this stuff. I'm kind of just giving you a general overview of what's out there. I think that's really, really helpful if you're looking to get into, you know, whatever plant it is I'm doing an Array Plant Index on. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Red Plant Index. I'm pleased to announce it is back. It will be kind of periodic because they do take a lot to put out. So please bear with me. If you'd like to see me do a Red Plant Index on a specific plant, please leave a request in the comments and I will be sure to take a look at that. If you'd like to see any of the plants I currently own, then if you do not already, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Let's Wet My Plants. I know the name is silly. We're all slowly getting over it, but I think my name was taken. I should check. And if you'd like to see more videos such as this or any other of my content here on YouTube, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of our ever-growing family. I think we're nearly like, are we 38,000 now? What? Like, <laughs> thank you guys. It means the world to me. And I guess that's it. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I will see you next week. I love you very much and goodbye. Bye.